Graduating students, distinguished teachers, proud parents, ITPHU alumni, and friends, I'm very honored and humbled to join you in celebrating this wonderful occasion, the ninth convocation of Indian Institute of Technology, BHU Varanasi. Graduation is one of those steps in life that defines a coming of age, the ending of one era of life as a student and moving on to a new phase in which you are a leader, a doer, and an achiever on the world stage. I graduated from this great institution a while ago. I have so many wonderful memories of my student days at the Institute. As I go down memory lane, I recall the time we spent at Morvi Hostel and the strolls we took at Lanka. I fondly recall the dedication of our teachers, Professor Ghosh, Professor Kock, and Professor Vedya, to name a few. I made lifelong friends here. In fact, Kalash, one of my batchmates, joined me to start Zscaler. I'm very thankful to the Institute as the foundation of my success was built at Varanasi. When I graduated, I was excited, I was anxious, and I was eager. As I look back at my life's journey, I can't believe how far I have come. I was born and raised in a tiny village in the foothill of the Himalayas, on the border of Punjab and Himachal. Our village got electricity after I finished eighth grade, running water after I finished 10th grade. I sat in a car for the first time after 12th grade, and I took a flight for the first time when I went to America to do my master's. While life's journey never takes a straight path, it is full of ups and downs. The combination of preparedness, persistence, optimism, passion, and help from many mentors along the way led me to start five successful high-tech companies. If I can do it, you can do it too. I want to talk about two lessons I have learned in my life. My first lesson, uncover your passion and pursue it. Early on, you don't really know what your true passion is. At high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew one thing, I love to learn. I recall that my village high school had a very small library, three bookcases in total. I read almost every book in the library. I had no idea what profession I should choose. I had heard that engineering and medicine would be good choices. I knew I did not like dealing with blood, so I chose engineering. I did not know which branch of engineering I should take. Someone told me that electronics engineering would be good as it deals with televisions, radios, and radars. So I took electronics, which was a good choice in hindsight. I worked hard, enjoyed engineering, and did well. After my master's in computer engineering at University of Cincinnati, I started to work as a software engineer at a startup that sold healthcare financial systems. My company asked me to visit customers to demonstrate and help sell systems. That is when I discovered that I really enjoyed sales, interacting with customers, understanding their problems and solving them. I discovered that while I could do well in engineering, my real passion was in sales. I started to study everything I could find about sales and marketing. I decided to change my career from engineering to sales. 
and join IBM. IBM signed in to work on General Electric, or GE, to sell computer systems to GE engineers. We had no context or relationships with GE engineers who preferred HP computers over IBM. I would try to call GE engineers and they would hang up on me. This must have happened a few thousand times. The first few months at IBM were very frustrating. I wondered if I made the wrong career move and whether I should go back to the area I was trained in, software engineering. Rather than giving up, I decided to double down and took it as a challenge. I was desperate to find the right decision makers at GE to talk to. Going through the GE phone book, I came across several Indian engineers. A few of them took my call, but told me that they did not deal with buying computers. I decided to go through the entire phone book of 20,000 people. I found about 250 Indian engineers who I thought would be less likely to hang up on me. I was able to have a few dozen good conversations and put together a map of GE decision makers and engage with them. I called it ethnic marketing. I discovered a few important projects and our sales engagements took off. At IBM, I learned how to engage with CIOs and how to think about business and how to sell. I never looked back. This sales training was very helpful in my startups because without sales, no startup succeeds. I still recall what my manager at IBM had told me. If you can sell to GE, you can sell to any customer. What lesson did I learn from this? I discovered my passion. Even though I faced big hurdles, I could persist and persevere. This played a big role in my success at all of my startups. My second lesson, take risks and dream big. Raised in a small village by a small scale farming family, I had no history of entrepreneurship in my family. In the mid 90s, as the internet was just taking off and Netscape and internet startup had just gone public, I was fascinated by it. I asked myself, why can't I do a startup? I thought with the internet becoming pervasive, cybersecurity will become a big problem for businesses. I studied everything I could find about cybersecurity. I saw a big opportunity and got a strong conviction to start an internet security company. There was one problem. I had a very nice job as a vice president and number two man at a public company with cushy salary and a nice bonus. On top of that, I had stock options. The decision to quit my job and do a startup was hard, but I listened to my passion and decided to take the leap. The next challenge was to raise funds. Like most startups, I tried to raise funds from a venture capitalism. All of them turned me down as I had no startup experience. My wife Jyoti and I were disappointed with two choices give up our dream of startup, or invest our own life savings in it. I had developed a burning desire. I didn't want to give up my dream. Jyoti and I decided to put our life savings on the line and start Secure IT, our first startup. In fact, Jyoti also quit her nice job at Bell South, and we started the company together. The idea was simple. Let's burn the bridges behind so there's no turning back. Was it risky? Of course it was. A simple question that helped us make this decision was, what is the worst thing that can happen? The company can fail and they can, we can lose 
all our life savings. That isn't the end of the world. We had the confidence that we could find a job and start a new life. Secure IT became very successful and was acquired by Verisign. Without taking this risk, my life would have been very different. Zscaler or the four other startups I did would not have existed. As we take risks, we also need to dream big. We need to think big. My inspiration for starting Zscaler came from watching the growth of the company Salesforce. I started Zscaler with a big goal to create the sales force of cloud security. Our mind is very powerful. It is influenced by what we read, what we watch, and who we associate with. Having a friend circle of driven and ambitious people helps us think big. My inspiration for thinking big grew over time as I studied the lives of successful business leaders. The laws of success by Napoleon Hill motivated me to associate with like-minded people and dream big. It highlighted the difference between wishful thinking and a burning desire to achieve something. While my career move to sales and marketing played an important role, without a solid background in engineering, I could not have been able to do any startups. What lesson did I learn from this? Take risks, of course, calculated risks. Get out of your comfort zone. If you are in full control, you aren't pushing fast enough. Nothing big will happen without significant risks. Find a way or make a way. So remember my friends, the first lesson is to uncover your passion and pursue it. And the second lesson is to take risks and dream big. The degree you're getting today is the foundation that will open up many doors to force your path ahead. It is only the starting point for the next phase of your journey. You need to prove yourself as you progress in your professional career. Your communication skills will become very important. Great technical skills without good communication skills will hold you back. You'll need to adapt along the way to have a successful journey. I have been learning, unlearning, and relearning all my life. Your future is in your hands, no one else's. Many times, life-changing opportunities will come your way. You'll need to grab them at the right time as they won't wait for you forever. My friends, I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors.